Hello everyone and welcome back to another Engineering Statics lecture video. I hope you guys are all doing well and are ready to learn, so let's get started. Many exam questions focus on the moments of inertia of composite bodies. So these are bodies where it's basically an assembly of simple shapes connected together. So if we were to calculate the moments of inertia of one of these composite shapes, all we need to do is find the centroid of the composite shape and then using parallel axis theorem, find the moments of inertia of each of the simple shapes around that centroidal axis and then sum it all together. Now I know you're reading that thinking, what? Like, come on, Clayton, that's a bunch of word garbage. Show me what it means. Well, let's go back to this example over here. This is something that we actually covered in centroids. Let's say that I wanted to know the moment of inertia about this composite shape about its own centroidal axis. So if we were to look at the shape, we know from the centroid lecture video, we can figure out the centroid of each of the two shapes, y squiggle b and y squiggle p. And we know that the composite shape has a centroid y bar. So typically in exam scenarios, you will see that moment of inertia and centroids, they're actually covered in the same question. Because for many cases, we need the centroid to find the moment of inertia. If we didn't know what y bar is here, well, then we actually can't find the moment of inertia because we're going to need those distances. Now we actually covered this exact example in the centroid unit, and we figured out that y squiggle b is 50, y squiggle p is 115, and y bar is around 81. I believe it was 80.8, .8, and I know that some troll in the comments is going to mention that, but we're just trying to keep it simple, so I just left it as 81. So again, the whole goal here is to find the moment of inertia of this composite shape around the centroidal axis of this composite shape, which is going to be that red dashed line. This is why knowing the moment of inertia of simple shapes is going to come in handy. If we were to look at our purple shape at the top, we know the moment of inertia for a rectangle is base times height cubed divided by 12. Now the problem with that is that will give us the moment of inertia about its own centroidal axis. So that'll be the purple dashed line. So if I were to calculate the moment of inertia about this centroidal axis, base times height cubed divided by 12, I get a number, but again, that's the moment of inertia around the purple line. To convert it to the moment of inertia around the red line, we use parallel axis theorem. And the only thing I actually need to know is the distances between those two axes, which I call dp. So if we know what the distance between these two axes are, we can actually find the moment of inertia of our purple shape around the red axis. All we need is the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis, which we have, the area of our shape, you guys can figure that out pretty simply, times the distances between, or the distance between that axis squared. So we have everything we need, we can find out that. And we can repeat this process actually with the blue shape. So we know that the blue shape is also just a rectangle, so we can find its moment of inertia around its own centroidal axis, which is going to be that blue axis there. Calculate that using base times height cubed divided by 12. And then again, I want to convert that moment of inertia to the moment of inertia around the red axis. Again, using parallel axis theorem, I can find the distance between those two axes, and I can calculate it as follows. From there, I can find the total moment of inertia of this composite shape just by summing everything together. So all I'm going to do is take the moment of inertia of the purple shape around the red axis and add it to the moment of inertia of the blue shape also around that red axis, and we get the following. So as we're going to see, it's very similar to centroids where you basically treat each shape independently and then add it together at the end. Now, one thing too that I won't show here through an example, but it's fairly easy to know, is we can also have holes. And if that's the case, all we need to do is find the moment of inertia about the hole and then subtract it from our total moment of inertia. Again, it's the same thing that we did in centroids. If we have a hole, we just treat it as a negative area, if you will. So that's gonna be moment of inertia. So yeah, that's it for this video. I wanna thank you guys so much for listening. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video.